Good morning, church. You may be seated. Let's prepare our heart for the words of God. I pray that the words of God will uh, continue to equip us, to enable us to live victoriously. Okay. All right. Okay, let's pray. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to fill us. Father, we pray this morning um, for the Holy Spirit to give us understanding so we can go even deeper into the words of God that all of us, the church, will be equipped and be ready as the soldiers of Christ. We will do amazing things and then we will uh, conquer the world, we live victoriously and all in all, we can be a testimony to so many people, we can bring salvation to so many people. In Jesus' name I pray, Amen. Amen. Okay, so church, let's continue with um, the theme that we've been learning. I think this is the um, five, six, seven weeks. I think we've been learning about uh, the armor of God. And then uh, today, this morning, I want to share to you the other thing uh, as part of the, the armor of, um, from God, which is the shoes of the gospel of peace. I put the title, is the shoes of the gospel of peace. So it's easier to understand, it's direct to, uh, to the thing. Um, as it is written in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 from 13 to 15. Let's uh, review once again, book of uh, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 13 until 15. I'm reading from New International Version. So the Bible says this, Therefore put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, that the first one, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, that the second one, and then with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. And in um, English Standard Version, verse 15, it says, And as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. Now, you can see that uh, from this verse, the first three things is actually connected. Um, verse 14 until 15, there are three things uh, as part of the whole armors of God. Uh, it's in coma. So the first three things that we need to put on in, in, in our life, in our body, let's say, um, as the uh, whole armor of God. Number one is the belt of truth. We've learned about that. It's the truth uh, as our standard that holds everything, the belt of truth. And then the second one, the breastplate of righteousness. It is truth in action. It is truth in application. We need to apply the truth in our daily life. And then the third one, the shoes of the gospel uh, of peace. Now, um, first when uh, I, well, actually since um, um, in the month of um, October, now it's November, um, we, we uh, I received this personally, it's kind of a reminder, it's kind of, uh, well, it is a command from God, put on the whole armor of God. Now, as I go deeper, as, especially this morning, I begin to understand more that uh, actually it is very important for us to put on the whole armor of God. Not just one, or you cannot leave one thing and then put another thing. Because apparently, it's connected to each other. Uh, it affects uh, each other. You know, if you um, leave one thing, then um, in a battle, we, we will see uh, later that, well, your position, um, your battle, your ability to fight your enemy will, um, will greatly affect it if you leave just one, just one armor that God gave us. It might, um, it doesn't mean anything. If you have the sword, for example, but you didn't have the breastplate because your enemy can just um, release their arrow and then it can hit you. It's hard un unless you are a Kung Fu master, you can you know, cut the arrow, something like that. If you practice with the chopstick to get the flies, maybe you can do that. But you know, it's connected to one to each other. Now, a lot of teaching about this specific uh, issue, this specific armor, especially uh, verse 15 that uh, we will be learning about the readiness um, that comes from the gospel of peace. A lot of teaching about this, and I believe you heard, you've heard at least once in your life, um, you know, that taught you about bringing the good news to people, sharing and preaching the good news, right? When you read the Bible, especially in the Indonesian version, 
um, it says like that. Uh, you are ready to, well, to share the good news, to bring the good news. Now, you know, today I would like to invite you to learn more and to add to our understanding the truth that equips us and enable us to continue and be victorious in our spiritual warfare against the devil. Now, Paul mentioned it is very important to be able to stand. Okay? From these verses, there are three, um, uh, it, it's repeated three times. Three times Paul tells us to take, um, you know, to take um, our position and then to stand, not to fall. Ephesians 6, 11, and then um, 13 and 14. Now, one thing we need to be aware, in a battle, there is danger of falling. You need to be able to stand firm. So, there is a danger of being falling, being slipped, and fall to the ground if you are in the battle. You don't want to experience that. Life can throw you down if you don't have a strong grip. But, you know, God has made provision for us so that we can stand and not fall. Amen? That's amazing. And that provision is the shoes of the gospel of peace. So, God is able to keep us from falling. And the way He keeps us from falling is by fitting us successfully uh, for successful spiritual combat. God equipped us with the shoes of the gospel of peace. So if your aim is to persevere in the Christian life and not be defeated by the wiles of the devil, then you must put on these shoes. Okay? Particularly in order for us to uh, stand, to stand in the battle and then to uh, stay standing is to put our feet, to make sure that our feet is covered with the shoes, the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Because God wants us to God wants to keep us safe until the day of salvation. Now, what we are shod, shed, shed, S H O D. What we are shed or fitted with is the readiness of the gospel. Now, what does it mean? Okay. It means that your feet are ready to move with the gospel for the gospel's purpose. Now let's focus on the readiness. Let's focus on the readiness. When you are in a battle, especially at this time, for example, a phase uh, back then, I mean, I mean back then, it's, it's, it's not like now. Soldiers just shoot from afar using the rifle. But back then, that's why they use a sword. It's really a close combat battle. Close combat battle. And then, you know, um, your feet are one of the most important key as it supports your body, your everything, whether you want to attack whether you want to defend, whether you want to move forward, it all depends on your feet, right? If you are down, you cannot go forward. You cannot chase your enemy. You cannot defend yourself. It is very hard. That's why you need to stand and then you need to make sure that you have a strong grip. You have a good position. You have the stability that you need. This is so important that it can give you the stability again, it can give you a good position and then the readiness to move. You know, back then in, when I was in Chiputat, um, we used to play um, soccer uh, under the rain, barefoot, didn't wear anything. And it's very slippery and we like to tackle each other. We just slide. And then uh, after that, we got back home. Our um, shin got bruised everywhere. But it's just um, the game. Uh, but you know, why um, we, are, we um, are easily get tackled or uh, fall? Because it's just slippery. Especially if this, um, you know, the rain with the mud and everything. It's fun. It's really fun. But, but when you didn't have a grip, then it's just easy for you to fall, right? A tackle, even if you are standing, someone just tackle your feet from the side, for example, and then whoa, whoa. even you want to run, it's not easy for you to run because there's no strong, strong grip. So, we need to be ready to move, I believe that. We need to be ready to uh, move by having a firm grip on the ground. And it talks about sure footing, a sinking deep into the ground. Now you see, all of our body parts, it has its own function. Hand, head, and everything. But feet 
are for moving. Feet are for standing, the foundation. And then feet are for, for to move you from one place to another place, to make a step. So if you put on the shoes of readiness, then the idea will seem to be readiness to do what your feet are for. Well, namely moving. And if the readiness is the readiness of the gospel, well, it probably means ready to move with the gospel, move with the power of the gospel, and then for the gospel's purpose. For example, uh, well, uh, my son took a test examination rank um, yesterday. Um, he's in uh, karate. And then what they taught him, it's very important to have a strong stance. You sink to the ground. It is your hip. It's your hip. When you are in here, you, you didn't just stand, but you bend your knees as if that you are grounded to the earth. Then it, you will be tested wow, to have strong grip again and again and again. And every time, each time, each training, they will push you, they will try to push you. So you learn how to have a strong grip and then not be moved um, easily by your, by your opponent. And it's the same thing, basically, the principle that we need to have a firm foundation. Well, Jesus is our rock, but we need to also stand firm. And in here, God provides us with the shoes of the gospel of peace. So, back to Ephesians chapter 6.15, the armor of God is given to us believers to help us stand against the devil. It's introduced as defensive armor. Verse 13, it says, the, Take the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil day. So right now, you might not experience the evil day. But, well, we'll never know. The devil, are, all, are they are always ready. They will never uh, stop. They will never take a rest. Um, the devil is watching us. Then, when we are not ready, the devil will attack us. So, the issue is how to standing. Okay? The issue is how to stay standing. By this time, we really need to understand that we are in a spiritual warfare in our life. We are not in a relaxed position. Spiritual warfare is real. Just like, well, it's even more real, I believe, than our physical. You know, the Bible says, when you pray, you release something here on earth, it will be released from heaven. When you bound on earth, it will be bound in heaven. It's as real as it gets. So, okay. Let's remember again these things. The first one, the Lord Jesus Christ has already won the victory for us by His death on the cross. So, let's be firm in this truth. So, we have the victory. We are more than conqueror. Amen? So, Jesus won the victory for, for us. And then the second one, the enemy, our enemy, the devil, Satan, has already been defeated. So we need to make sure that we understand about this truth. So we will not be uh, easily moved or sway around and then um, intimidated. Because we know, hey, you, 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 just, you can try. But I know that I am safe. I am redeemed. God, Jesus died for me. And you've been defeated. Amen? But the third one, let's see, Satan, the devil, and his forces continue to fight. They will never stop. They will continue to fight and trying to reclaim the lost ground in believers' life, in our life. As in the book of John 10, verse 10, the Bible says this, The thief comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come so they may have life and have it too. The full, to the full. What are the things that the devil are trying to steal, to kill, and to destroy from us? The first one, God's vision, God's purpose in our life. When, when you lost your vision, your purpose, well, Monday is like, oh, it's Monday again. You will, you will lose your patience, uh, your energy. But what drives you, I believe, is God's vision. What makes this church exist is God's vision. 
not because anything else. But we go driven by God's vision, God's purpose. And the same thing for our life. And then the second one, the devil is trying to steal, to kill, and to destroy God's provision in your life. You know, God provides you with so many things. There are stories in the book of the Bible, well, maybe uh, I'll share later, that actually um, God wants to give something to His people, but the devil is protecting, um, guarding. So God's people cannot receive what God is, um, you know, has in store for them. And the same thing for us. And then in general, the devil will always try to steal, to kill, to destroy God's blessings in our life. Now let's realize this. The devil cannot take away your salvation. Okay? The devil cannot take away your salvation. And the devil sure can make you miserable Christian in this world and life. Though he cannot take away our salvation, but let's realize that the devil sure can make you miserable Christians or believers in this world, in this life. Because the devil wants to keep your salvation working for you. It can happen when you are not equipped with God's armor and then you fall in your battle. So you will not receive the things that God has prepared for us. Well, the devil cannot keep you out of heaven, but he can make you experience hell on earth. If we know who we are, well, salvation is part of our life. As we receive Jesus in our life, then guarantee it's for us. But still, the devil will try to make your life miserable while you are on earth, try to shake your faith, and well, at the end, well, the, um, the whole purpose is for you to uh, go away from God, to leave God. So Paul said in this passage, the shoes I want to wear when you are in a battle is the gospel of peace. As if that Paul said that. Now the biblical definition of peace, or um, Irene, it is calm and tranquility of soul in the midst of difficult circumstances despite external turmoil. You know, let's understand this. Biblical, biblical definition of peace. Calm and tranquility of soul in the midst of difficult circumstances or despite external turmoil. So external, something on the outside. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. There will be storm, there will be troubles, there will be challenges. But deep in your soul, in your heart, when you have God's peace, then you will be calm. You can control your life. Your life will be controlled not by your situation, but by the peace of God. For me, I find it so amazing. It is the calm and tranquility of soul in the midst of difficult circumstances despite external turmoil. Well, you know, life isn't always easy, right? Life isn't always easy and calm, smooth, as we want it. There are storms, troubles, challenges, hard times in your life. It just happened. But even in those kind of situations, God provides you with His peace in your heart that will enable you, come on, to stay calm so you can even still singing, still smiling. You still have the joy. Well, not because you are crazy. You have problem and then you are smiling and you are thankful. But it's just proven that you cannot be defeated by the devil. Because you are wearing the full armor of God. Because you are not defeated by the devil's attack again. But because you choose your feet to, you know, being fitted or shared with the gospel of the peace of God. That's amazing. In the beginning, Paul said, put on. Okay? Put on. Put on the gospel of peace. The third um, items. Put on the gospel of peace. Your feet are fitted or shod with the gospel of peace. It is given to us. Listen to this. It is given to us. It is provided for us. It is available for us. 
actually it is an option for us whether you want to take it and put it whatever it is or well as if that you might say that I don't need that by doing things um, in different way in the other way with the words of God so you are free to use it you are free to take it you can choose to use it or choose not to use it it is an option you know the opposite of peace is anxiety worry when you don't have the peace well you tend to um, be worried when you have a problem you can choose whether you want to put the peace of God or you want to be worried you want to have you want to have the anxiety to control your circumstances now Philippians chapter 6 chapter 4 verse 6 from English Standard Version the Bible says this do not be anxious about anything but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known to God so it is like a suggestion well I know that you are experiencing something but in your circumstances right now do not be anxious but pray so you can choose either to pray or you can choose to be anxious you can choose to surrender to bring your life to God and give God the opportunity to take care of that or you can choose well to be worried about anything I think I like the word a uh, concern we need to be concerned for everything but as the Bible says, do not be anxious about what? About anything. That means anything. Anything. When anything is anything. Do not be anxious about anything. Just don't be anxious about anything. Don't let your problems, circumstances control your life. But bring it into prayer. You know, we cannot choose to let anxiety to control our life if anxiety and weariness is how you live your life how you roll come on you are actually walking barefoot because you didn't put the shoes you didn't cover your feet with the gospel of peace then you know winter is coming and then you know many people fall because of black ice right it's very slippery we cannot see I think the world is a slippery um, place a slippery ground it's important what you put your feet it's okay Philippians 4 7 Bible says this and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus you know church you might be disappointed right now you might not understand what is happening into your life but the goal is not to understand everything but you need to make sure that your hearts and your mind are guarded by the peace of God oh I pray that you know the peace of God will be upon your life it will dominate, it will control, it will cover your heart and your life right now. And I declare this morning that peace be with you right now. Let's see this. This is just a simple picture. The picture of a uh, uh, sol Roman soldier's boots called Kaliga Clavata. Hopefully I pronounce it right. Whatever. See, you see, it has spikes and well it's basically like that and if you want to buy it it's quite expensive two hundred dollars maybe right now because it's rare you know? <laughs> unless you make it by your own you know, put something and put spike so this is the illustration uh, well you know it has spikes uh, for a purpose so you can really you know um, well in the battleground again I imagine I try to imagine the battleground at that time because it's a uh, close combat face-to-face -face combat 
well, there will be blood. And the, uh, the ground will be, you know, muddy, very slippery. You know, so it's very important that they have the cleats or the spikes. So when they want to move, they will not just like in the black eyes. You know, with the duck walk, you have to you know, be really careful. <laughs> right? So I, have, I, I, I don't want to put this, but this is just for an illustration. Well, actually, it's not good enough. So I have these shoes. If I wear this, which one do you think faster or can give more grips than this one? I asked DP before, but I think it should be okay. The words are more important. If I wear this, he will be easily uh, push me, right? Because it's just slippery. I, can, I didn't have a strong grip. But if I change my shoes with this one, oh, it depends to our energy. <laughs> well, maybe he will still able to push me because I'm lighter. <laughs> I mean, he's more muscular than me. You can see, that's the fact. <laughs> I have faith, okay. In six months, okay, in summer. <laughs> but you know, again, this is very important. Let your feet be covered, fitted, shared with the gospel of peace, which is it will give you grip, stability, strong foundation, so you are ready when you want to move, when you want to stand your ground, when you want to defend, or you want to attack. Put on the shoes of the gospel of peace. Wear it all the time. Now, you know, um, let's move to John 14, verse 27, last verse. The Bible says this. Oh, this is so amazing. Peace I leave with you. Okay? My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Now, from this verse, we can see that apparently, not only God that can give you peace, but the world also can give you peace, right? There's an option. Which one do you want to take? The world can also give you peace. The world offers you peace. Oh yes, the world offers you peace through so many things, different kind of forms or ways. By um, things, material things, material things. You think some people think if I have this, if I have this, if I get this, then I will have peace. Well, many times. It will give you headache maybe. After that, you have to think, oh, I have to pay in 12 months, in five years again, whatever it is. You know, through medicine, some people try to find peace by using medicine. But after that, after it wear down, um, the effect went away, then your problem is still there. Or maybe through entertainment. People go here, there, do things, do there. Well, it's good for your soul. But it cannot give you the real peace. Only God can give you the real peace. As the Bible says, peace I live with you. The peace of God. The peace I give to you. My peace. So we need to understand the difference. The people, the peace from the world is outside in. The peace that the world offers is outside in. We try to have peace by putting the outside element into our life. An outside element that we try to really put to change what is inside us. You will never be able to do that. There is nothing from the outside that can change the insides, especially if it is material things. But the peace from Jesus is inside out. I give you the peace into your heart. The peace that is inside our heart. It is in our heart. Then the peace that is, it is the peace that's always present. The peace that's, that will affect the outside circumstances. It will control. Well, on the other verse, um, there's a verse the Bible says that, um, you know, you need to guard your heart. Because from your heart, you know, it affects everything. So it should be from the inside out. 
not from the outside in. And the peace that God gave us is the peace in our heart. So, let's understand this again. That it is really important as we are in a battle. Let's understand this. We are in a spiritual battle. We need to be ready. We need to stand uh, firm in our life. We need to be, you know, to have the stability. And in order to be able to do that, we need to put, we need to cover our feet with the readiness of the gospel of peace. So put on the shoes of the gospel of peace. Wear it all the time. Let it be the base of your life that will keep you standing before the battle, during the battle, and they stay and then stay standing after even the battle. So let me pray for you. I don't know what you are experiencing right now, but I just want to pray a simple prayer for you. If a lot of things, you know, fill your mind, your heart right now, you are worried about so many things, open your heart. Let the peace of God fill your heart. I found that that verse really um, give me strength this morning. I prepare um, this sermon last night, um, and then you know you'll never know things can happen at any time. But I'm strengthened, I'm encouraged because I know right now that there is God peace that is available for me, and I want to put that. I want to put that peace, you know, as the grip. I don't want to walk barefoot. When I choose to worry, to follow my feelings, to let the circumstances, um, you know, control me, then it's like I'm walking barefoot. It's very easy for me to fall. For, it's very easy for me to uh, move away from God, to get disappointed, not just to, from people, but to God Himself. But as we embrace the peace of God, I believe you will become strong soldiers that can, you know, ready to do many things for the kingdom of God. So let's pray. Let's pray. I want to pray for you. If you experience this, if you have weariness, if you are worried about something, you are struggling, you are praying for um, something that you've been praying, and you know, some of you, maybe you, you cannot sleep at night. Well, it clouded your mind. You cannot study, you cannot work, you cannot reach your maximum potential. Father God, I pray this morning, we want to thank you that you give us your peace. It is available for us. Lord, we want to cover our feet with the gospel of peace. May this armor strengthen our life. So we know, we want to realize that we cannot attack. It means nothing. Even if we hold the sword, if we put the breastplate, but we cannot move. But uh, if you are down on the ground, but we want to have a solid foundation by putting, covering our feet with the gospel of peace. I pray that your peace will be filled in your people's life, in the church. And we may walk, continue um, with the, the full armor of God. Bless this church, Father God. In Jesus' name, I pray. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 God bless you.